Hi, this is Joe Walensky, Convey UX Program Manager, talking with uh, some of the folks who will be uh, doing presenting the educational sessions at our conference coming up in January in Seattle. Uh, and so today I'm talking with Andrew Shaw. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Where are uh, you talking to us from today? Uh, well, I'm talking to you from a uh, not so sunny day in the uh, Baltimore, D.C. area. So uh, we're located in uh, our office at Spark is located in Bethesda, Maryland, right outside of the uh, D.C. Beltway. All right. Well, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about Spark and uh, types of uh, work you're involved in? Sure. Uh, so Spark started about five years ago. Um, uh, I'm one of the founders of Spark. Uh, we started out as uh, kind of a, a UX research agency. Uh, we quickly realized though, the limitations of just being a research agency, realizing that there's kind of a whole other aspect to UX is you, know, you have to understand users, but you also have to be able to design for them effectively. So early on in Spark, we kind of merged um, uh, a team of researchers with a team of UX designers and formed Spark, which is really at the heart of what we do is kind of the intersection of research and design. Um, and I lead the uh, UX team. I lead, I lead the, uh, the researchers on that part of the team, but we all work pretty uh, hand in hand together. Um, and our research team has about uh, about six or so UX people on it. And uh, so, uh, you know, what typically are the types of things that, that you get involved with uh, personally? What are, like what's your uh, main area of interest? Um, I have my hand in pretty much everything, <laughs> so uh, I, I kind of oversee the, I guess, the strategy these days for a lot of our research, even though I do participate in as much as I have time for. Um, so these days we're doing a lot with um, uh, ethnographical kinds of studies, we're doing diary and longitudinal studies this week, um, we've been doing um, some uh, major redesign work uh, for other clients, we're doing a lot of uh, usability testing and card sorting, optimizing information architecture. Um, so it's, it's usually always something different, always new challenges, um, but I somehow managed to, um, I, I describe my role as Spark as kind of the conductor of the orchestra. So I just make sure that the instruments are in tune and we're using the right instruments and everything sounds okay at the end of the day. So it's my role. Well, I, you've uh, recently uh Publish your book, Eye Tracking and User Experience Design. So uh, I hope that's going well. Congratulations on that. Uh, what was, uh, how did, how did the idea for that come about, and uh, kind of what's the, what's the theme of what your book gets into besides the obvious? Yeah, I mean, so this is a book I've wanted to write for a really long time. I think I was just waiting for just the right moment and realized that was never going to come. Um, but what really sparked my interest in that is that, I, I mean, I've been doing eye tracking for a number of years, um, but as a practitioner, there really wasn't a lot of stuff out there to tell me how other people are using eye tracking. Um, I just knew what I was doing. And Bergstrom and I came together about a year, actually, I guess it's over a year ago, and realized that this is a great time to bring in a lot of talented UX people besides ourselves who are doing eye tracking and things like social media and web content and video games and usability testing and, and come up with a book that really talks about all the applications, the exciting applications that eye tracking is offering uh, to the UX community at large. So it was, it was a team effort. Jen and I were sort of the ones in charge of, um, as she said, herding cats a lot of the time to pull all these great people together to tell, to tell a lot of powerful stories about how eye tracking is used today. So as you uh, put together your thoughts for that book, um, well, I mean, obviously, eye tracking's been around for a long time. There, you know, different people use it in different ways. Um, did you I, I identify any uh, particular challenges or emerging trends that are changing with respect to your use of eye tracking? Um. I, I think in a few ways. I think the uh, the technology has gotten much better uh, over the last decade or so that I've been using it. Um, it's uh, cheaper, faster, a uh, lot smaller, a lot smaller than they used to be, um, uh, relatively easy to use so that a typical UX practitioner can at least collect the data. 
Um, so it just it's made the tool a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Um, lately, um, I've been working with a lot of clients to do eye tracking on um, a lot more different kinds of platforms um, than I had used to. For a while, I was doing a lot of traditional kind of website evaluations on you know desktops or laptops for traditional environments. But now uh, we're doing eye tracking on everything. We're doing eye tracking. Um, I did eye tracking this summer on TVs, very large displays. Um, uh, recently, we've also done, uh, which is the focus of my, my workshop, uh, on mobile devices, iPhones, Kindles, tablets, iPads, etc. Um, and even taking it into kind of real world environments where we have our, our eye tracking glasses, where we're actually doing usability and user experience uh, uh, in the real world, which is really exciting. Well, I, so that that is going to be the uh, topic of your uh, workshop at the conference. Um, you're going to be uh, providing a, an introduction to uh, eye tracking, but specifically you're going to be talking about the mobile user experience. And uh, so what's uh, kind of what, you know, what's the theme of that, or what brought you to uh, developing uh, this particular topic? Well, um, at Spark, we invested in mobile eye tracking pretty early. Um, we had been doing a lot of mobile design, like on many other design firms, um, and we realized that you know eye tracking really has a strong applications for the mobile experience as well. Uh, the, the same kind of challenges we have with desktop, just in a, a smaller package. Um, one of the biggest challenges with mobile eye tracking, which the folks in the workshop learn a lot about, is um, uh, how do you effectively track devices that are inherently much smaller and, and are less standardized than your typical laptop or desktop? Um, so folks in the workshop are going to be uh, learning about two fundamental, fundamentally different techniques. Um, one is using a mobile stand, which uh, is a stand that we have at Spark and that you'll have a hands-on experience with where the, where the actual device sits on the stand. Uh, and that's really great if we want to understand um, uh, one participant to the next in a very uh, sort of um, fixed setting. Uh, of course, the challenge of the fixed setting is it kind of goes against the mobile almost, which is something where mobile is on the go. It's very contextual. It's in, in it, you know, in the user's environment. They might be sitting on their their couch at home or on the subway. Uh, so we realized early on that a fixed approach is not going to work for every study. So we're also going to be bringing our uh, eye tracking glasses as well, which, as you can imagine, the person wears them. They're not very attractive, at least not the current generation. Um, but what it allows the participants to do is have total freedom of movement. So they actually can sit on a couch uh, using their iPad, and we can actually still track them pretty well. So um, it's kind of a people will learn about the, the pros and cons of each approach um, and kind of where the where mobile eye tracking is heading. I mean, the technology is moving pretty quickly. All right. Well, uh, I'm definitely looking uh, forward to uh, checking that out. That the mobile area is one that uh, I do a lot of projects on all the time. So, um, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to uh, give you a preview of, of your topics for the conference, and we'll see you here in a couple of months. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, Andrew.